In this video, I'm going to be talking about the SSA case, the side side angle case for trigonometry for working with triangles. Okay, and this is the tricky one. If you ever have trouble remembering which of the cases is the tricky one, it's the one that's acronym would be inappropriate if we turned it backwards. We never say angle side side for obvious reasons if you think about it. So when we talk about the SSA case, the reason that it's tricky is because if you are given two sides next to each other and then an angle that's not between them, side a side and then an angle, there can be no solution. There can be one solution, or there can be two solutions. And so the question is, how can we figure this out mathematically? And the answer is by using the law of sines. That's one way, at least. There's, there are more than one way, but this is one way, at least, to figure out whether we have one solution, two solutions, or no solutions for a triangle. Drawing triangles is also going to help us out. If you can draw a triangle, if you can use a ruler and a protractor, uh, and maybe a compass, that might help too. Um, then, then you can figure this out pretty quickly just by drawing the triangle. But we're going to talk about a mathematical way. Let's talk about first a case like this. Let's say that we are asked to solve the following triangle. Okay, Solve the given triangle, and I've given you three measurements here. A is 22 inches, B is 12 inches, and A is 40 degrees. And I've went ahead and I used a ruler and a protractor. And I was very careful in these measurements. I, w I went ahead and drew it out already just for the sake of time. Now. I look at this, and this is what I know based on this picture. I know that a triangle exists because I was able to connect the three lines using a line that was 22 inches. This is drawn to scale, of course. A line that was 22 inches long, a line that was 12 inches long, and I have a line here that's 40 degrees. And it was possible, whenever I used this 40 degree reference line right here, it was possible to take this 22 inch line and connect it. So I know we're going to have a solution just by drawing it, but of course mathematically that's not so easy, right? What's going to tell us mathematically if we have an answer? So, to attack this kind of a problem, what we're going to do is we're going to use the law of sines. Now, here's what I know. According to the law of sines, this length, 22 inches, over the sine of its opposite angle, the one across from it, sine of 40. 22 over the sine of 40 degrees should be equal, should be equal in proportion to 12 inch measurement over the sine of its opposite angle, which is B. And I picked these two measurements because there's only one thing I don't know out of those four things, out of those four values, and that's what angle B is. So I'm going to use this proportion to solve the problem. Now, if I can come up with an answer, if I can come up with a number by working this out, then I'm going to have a solution to the problem. So this becomes a cross-multiplication problem. 22 times the sine of B degrees is equal to 12 times the sine of 40 degrees. Cross multiplying gets me here. To get the sine of B by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 22. So that goes away. And this will tell me, this ratio over here tells me what the sine of B is. So in order to figure out what B actually is, the angle, I have to do the arc sine, sine to the negative 1. Of that gigantic fraction over there. That's what B is going to be in degrees. So I grab my calculator. And of course, I want to make sure that my calculator is doing measurements in degrees right now. I do not want to be in radians. But I'm going to actually work this out. Let's see. I'm going to take 12 times the sine of 40. I'm going to divide that by 22. It gives me 0.35. And then I'm going to take the arc sine of that answer. It turns out the angle is 20.52 degrees. That's what B is. So now that we know B, and I know that I have an answer, I know at least it's not a no-solution case. That's what I can determine so far. There is a solution. The question is, are there two? Also, once I have this, it's going to be very simple to go farther because now that I know this is 40 and this is 20.5, I know that the three angles add up to 180. So it's going to be pretty simple to solve for C next. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip that for now. Once I solve for C, then I would use the law of signs again to solve for little c, for the length of c. The question is, how do I know that there aren't two solutions? Well, let's go talk about some different cases, and then maybe we'll come back to this problem. Next problem says solve the given triangle. Here are three measurements. A is 4 centimeters, B is 14 centimeters, and A, angle A is 60 degrees. So I went ahead and I drew it out for you. I didn't draw this one at scale. I drew it all the way out. This length is 14 centimeters for real. This is really a 60 degree angle using a protractor, and I just drew a reference line over here. I'm going to use that just to find out if this triangle is possible. Here's what I know. The line that connects this point here 
down to this reference line needs to be four centimeters long. But if I use my ruler and I try to get a line that's four centimeters, I get nowhere close. The longest, the closest I can do is going straight at it, right? Well, let's turn that paper sideways. The closest I can get is going straight down, like at a right angle. And even if I do that, I only get down to about here. Or so, okay, the longest line that I can draw that's four centimeters goes about right here. This is a no solution case. This line is not long enough to actually make the three lines connect, as long as it's four centimeters, not unless I stretch that thing out, right? So how can I tell mathematically? Well, the answer is I have to use the law of sines. So I come down here. The law of sines will tell me something like this. Actually, let's pull it up here. The law of sines says if this triangle actually existed. Let's assume for a second that it does, that we were able to make a triangle out of this. This would be angle C, this would be angle B, and this would be side C. So if that triangle actually existed, what I would know is this. 4 over the sine of 60 degrees would be equal to 14 over the sine of its opposite, which is B. So now I have a cross multiplication problem. And so far it looks a lot the same, doesn't it? It looks exactly the same. I would cross multiply. I would say 4 times the sine of b degrees is equal to 14 times the sine of 60 degrees. And to get that sine of b by itself, I would divide both sides by 4. I'll get rid of that. And that tells me what the sine of b is, but it doesn't tell me what b is. So I need to do arc sine. I need to do sine to the negative 1. Sine to the negative 1 of all that stuff on the right. And so far, everything looks the same, right? In fact, you don't need to draw the triangle. You could start every single problem like this. The question is, what about that tells us that this is a no-solution case, that you can't actually draw a triangle? Well, the answer is, if I go like this and I try to work the same problem out, I can take 14 times the sine of 60. I can divide it by 4, and that gives me this number. Now, when I go to do the arc sign, I get an error. And the error is because it's not possible to have an angle with a sine of 3. You can go look that up if you want to. For the sake of time, I'm not going to explain it. Just know that we get an error message. That's what that word is supposed to be. That's why you don't write in pin, folks. Okay? B, well, I get an error. And so what that means is I have no solution to this triangle. It's not possible to draw a triangle with those measurements. So what we conclude so far is that if you get an error message, there is no solution. If you don't get an error message, if you actually get a number, there is at least one solution. For the sake of uh, not making this video 15 minutes long, I'm going to cut off now and you can go watch. I'll create a second video about how to talk about the, how to discover whether there's two solutions or one solution. So there we go so far.